the other place we have to do yellow, because this is a place that we started talking about uh, last live stream, where someone brought it up about Bangladesh, and I wasn't aware, I didn't know too much of Bangladesh, that's for sure. But since that time, we've learned a lot. And they said, yeah, Bangladesh was pretty peaceful. Bangladesh just had civil unrest and the government was removed and a military dictatorship to a certain degree. It's in the beginning stages. We'll see if they bring elections or not. But Bangladesh government just flipped, right? So this is civil unrest. Okay. So let's take this down. So Bangladesh, where we thought maybe it was going to be blue, is now yellow. Okay. Let me put it here. Okay. Now, just because we're on Bangladesh, let me give you a little history. Because uh, Real Xenomorph um, posted a link on Bangladesh that there was a guy that summarized what was going on in Bangladesh, right? So I'm gonna really quickly take with grain of salt, Alex, I hope you're here, you'll reference everything or whatnot, right? But Bangladesh, when the British Empire broke up this region, turned this into India, Pakistan, and Bangladesh was actually part of Pakistan originally, right? This was West Pakistan, East Pakistan, right? And so crazy concept, right? Pakistan. So Pakistan being these two areas and then India in the middle, like it just seems so weird to me. Right. But one of the reasons this happened was because as soon as people in the UK, the lords in the UK drew the maps on the line, the lines on on the map. Right. They said, oh, yeah, we'll give this regions to the Muslims and this regions to the Hindus and you know this this and this and everyone can live in peace they, if they want to they can go there and there was mass killings mass migration shift happening and all this chaos right but this area was Pakistan and then the eastern Pakistan was not being treated fairly by Western Pakistan Pakistan over here and slowly over time what happened was Bangladesh ended up getting its independence. Okay. And it became Bangladesh. So it separated from the Pakistan umbrella. Okay. And this basically happened in early 1970. I think 1971, there was a war taking place, civil war taking place. India was involved a little bit as well. But what basically happened was when Bangladesh got into power or was created, right, the new country Bangladesh was created the people that got into power said that any fighters that help liberate Bangladesh create Bangladesh those people that fought in the revolution 30% of government jobs would be reserved for them right so just imagine if you're living in Canada and Canada had a civil war right you would say 30% of the jobs, government jobs, right, that are available in Canada would be reserved to the families of the people that fought in the Civil War, if we had a Civil War in 1971. That's exactly what was going on in Bangladesh. So that seemed fair to a certain degree, right, because they fought in the Civil War. If you fight to create something, you should have a stake in that something, right? You should be rewarded, right? So that was the law and then in the early or mid 2000s or yeah mid 2000s early 2000s they changed the law and said not only those that fought in the civil war right would 30 percent of government jobs be uh reserved for them it would also include their children right so now is it fair those people who fought in the Civil War, 30% of the jobs were reserved for them. Now laws pass because they're in the government. The people, 30% of the jo jobs created by the government is for the families that fought in the Civil War. And 
I'm assuming there would be a majority, right? They voted that their children should also reap this benefit, right? Okay. I think people were pretty upset in Bangladesh. Population of Bangladesh is 170 million people or something like that. It's huge. Like population gigantic, right? And then in 2010 or something like that, they modified the law and said uh, their grandchildren as well. Some crap like this. So basically, they're creating a caste system just the same way with India. Anyone, anyone and their relatives that fought in 1971 war, 30% of government jobs would be reserved for them. Well, that's a boom and a half, right? In a country that is pretty poor with small land, I believe one of the reasons Bangladesh had her radar was because it's the most densely populated planet on a planet. Um, a country on the planet or a region on the planet or something like this gaza is one or used to be right it is now they're all refugees right camps right so there was civil unrest and the government didn't handle that well because they came out and compared to these people to traitors whoever's demonstrating just like hillary clinton in the united states coming on saying that anyone that supported trump was a deplorable Bangladeshi came out and said, the government came out, anyone that wants to change this law is a traitor to Bangladesh or some crap like this, right? And keep this in mind, 30% of the jobs in Bangladesh are reserved for those people or were those people that and their children and grandchildren that fought in the Civil War in 1971. Also, there was other segments reserved for different types of people. Uh, you know, I think 10% for women, there was a couple of percent for disabled people, there was uh, something, something. So all in all, I think over 50% of government jobs in Bangladesh were reserved for other people, I think like 55%. So the rest of the population was fighting for like 40 to 45% of jobs, government jobs that are available to them. And, you know, they had, I don't know what the numbers were, it's crazy, like 50,000 people graduating last year fighting for like position for a thousand jobs or something like this so it's just unfair people realizing that they're never going to get out of poverty and neither will their children if they don't do anything about it civil unrest government gets overthrown okay is it a color revolution no i don't think it's a color revolution i don't think it's instigated by the western world i think the western world uh, might have had a role to play and will have a role to play in who controls it Okay, and I think they're already in there, and I think they've been there for a long time, right? So that's Bangladesh turned into yellow. Now, keep this in mind. This is linked up to what's going on here across the way, all the way across, right? Bangladesh, right? India getting close to china india trying to play a fine line between the west and the east right trade increasing with russia up the yin yang energy going to india being repackaged sold to europe at twice the cost and all this jazz right so what's happening in bangladesh is very much linked up with what's happening in Pakistan, linked up with what's happening in Iran, linked up with what's happening in Gaza and genocide there, linked up to the United States coming out this week saying they mistakenly, mistakenly sent the Taliban $220 million. Just imagine, they had tons of military bases there four years ago when Biden regime came in, right, in the United States. One of the first things they did they ooh, dug out, ooh, gone. They didn't dug out. They just told everyone their military in Afghanistan, pack up, you're leaving. And they left all their weapons there. So they left a ton of weapons for the Taliban. More weapons than what the Taliban had in 2000, right? So they went into Afghanistan, NATO powers after 9-11, right? They went into Afghanistan, bombed the crap out of Afghanis, right? Killed tens of thousands of civilians drop du weapons depleted uranium weapons right brutalized the afghanis created torture centers prisons in afghanistan nothing compared to what israel is doing to gazans and palestinians but they were still torturing people jessica lynch and all that jazz right well jessica lynch was iraq but same deal right 
black sites where they were torturing Afghanis. 20 years later, I think the cost was like $6 trillion later, not only did they leave, they, they say, okay, we failed. And every president knew that secret documents were revealed by all places by the CIA newspaper in the United States, Washington Post, right? So Washington Post, again, state paper, right? So Washington Post, CIA Post came out and said, oh yeah, all the presidents, all the administrations since Bush Cheney regime knew that there was no way they were going to win in Afghanistan. Afghanistan, a complete failure. Six trillion dollars later, 20 years later, two decades later, thousands of American NATO personnel killed. Tens of thousands of Afghanis brutalized, tortured, murdered. Millions of refugees created. They pull out. Four years ago, leave billions of dollars worth of weapons, and just this week, the United States accidentally sent them $220 million plus. At the same time, where Bangladesh is having a civil unrest, the government gets overthrown, Pakistan has stated that they will support Iran, they will send weapons to Iran, and they are sending weapons to Iran in their battle against Israel. Right, in their war against Israel, nuclear nation, by the way, right? India teeter tottering, right? But India is going to go it's the, with the BRICS. There's no doubt about it. They'll walk that fine line with the West for as long as they can. And Europe needs India, right? They need India because they're getting a ton of energy from India goods and services and stuff like this, huge services. In the Western world coming out of India so they're not going to sanction India anytime soon India doing more trade with Russia and they're um, doing their direct trade now and Russia investing in India up the yin yang right connected up with Iran Saudi Arabia in play Yemen in play Egypt in play right Libya has always been in play right Morocco is getting into play. This whole region in play, 